Everybody, it's Darren back with another uh, episode of Committed. Man, it was a big weekend for commitments, um, some big time commitments all around the nation with official visits. And uh, we're getting a couple minutes, uh, months into the process now. Uh, athletes are starting to, uh, a lot of them find their way. And we are joined by one of those big time commitments right now, Bailey Warren. And and Bailey, thank you for taking time literally during oh, your yeah. today. <laughs> No, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, um, and and I put it on Twitter the other day, like you were the one when we started all this. I mm -hmm. mean, literally jumped out at us when <laughs> um I turned around at Triple Crown and all of a sudden this uh Pollard was jumping over my head, it seemed like. <laughs> um, and I'm like, we gotta talk to that kid, but uh <laughs> um talk about talk about your process a little bit um and what mm -hmm. it's been like the last few months going through the recruiting. Um, I think like, so the beginning, uh, June 15th, obviously was like crazy, you know, getting a bunch of texts, emails, all that type of stuff, starting a set of calls and all that type of stuff. And then going on from there, I started to get organized. I got myself like an ag agenda and everything, like a calendar to like start marking down stuff, taking notes on like paper, um, what I liked about the colleges and like just questions I had and like writing those down. So I think think like my big thing was like staying organized throughout the whole thing or trying my best to stay organized and then like um also give my time to like get a break and all that type of stuff and then getting further down closer to like August obviously setting up those visits and all that and then like I was kind of going by um I made like a little reel and like I kind of said in there a little bit like how much like how comfortable the girls were like their schools athletes or programs athletes was with their coaches and like how they interacted and then also like going off academics and all that type of stuff like that. So I think over the whole process, though, I think the biggest thing is to be patient and also not like keep a big idea on like, like stay set on one thing, but be open to other things. Because I know I was set on one thing. And then like throughout the whole process, I was like, actually, you know, I kind of want, you know, this more like like this more. So patient, staying open and like um, just organized, too, is a big thing. Did it help because we talked before and and um, I had a chance to talk with your parents at Nationals and then your sister, right, who's obviously gone through this, did mm -hmm. it help a lot um, having them, you know, the process probably wasn't brand new for you. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I definitely did see it with my one above me, Brielle. I saw it with her more than I did with my oldest sister. She plays softball, but she's like a senior. So I was really young at the time. I didn't understand anything, but like mine was more similar to Brielle's obviously being through volleyball and then her class that was the first year they did the June 15th rule so I saw her go through it more and then my parents my dad coaches my mom had to deal with it with my oldest and my second oldest sister so they were big helps and then obviously I had like my coaches at Skyline and my recruiting coordinator help out a lot too so I had like a really good like uh surrounding of people I guess support system Support, yes, of <laughs> support system, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, it, that that does help though, because you can tell just in how comfortable you are talking about it. But one thing I know, talk with your family and and your sister was adamant about taking your time, right? She had said the mm -hmm. biggest bit of advice she had was take as long as you can. Um, yes. So how in the end did you actually know? And Wake Forest, by the way, and we'll talk about why Wake, but how did you know, mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm ready to be done? Did you take all your visits? Were they all wrapped up or was it something else? They were like, so Wake Forest was actually my first visit. And then I went to one that weekend after. And then um, going to theirs, I think it was just kind of obviously taking my time. They also were really like encouraging of like taking time, make sure I was comfortable. They didn't pressure me like whatsoever. I think that was a really big thing and they showed they care. They've also been watching me since I was like 14. So they've been there through my like ups and downs kind of. So like the comfort was kind of there. And then when I went there, it was just like very like family environment and like the way they had me interacting with the girls, coaches and not just like the volleyball staff, but other staff too was like a really big part because it shows like everyone's kind of connected like outside of just the volleyball program, but like with everyone else on campus too. So like that was a really big thing. And like, I don't know. I think that and like, yeah, the taking the time part is a huge, huge part. I will say I did see like a lot of it's hard to like not want to like rush it whenever you see other girls committing like mm -hmm. on June 15th or like a few like few days after weeks after whatever it is. And then like 
I mean, I knew I wanted to take the visits first and then go ahead and commit. So I did follow through with that. So yeah, being patient was like one of my big things too. Well, and let's talk about, because your club team, very talented, um, and you had some teammates do both, right? That committed. Mm -hmm. What is that like? Like, do you feel like, oh no, I'm missing out. They already committed. <laughs> like what goes through your mind when, when one of your teammates, close friends does commit right away? Mm -hmm. I think, um, just like also knowing like everyone's process is different. So like, I see that I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm ready. But then I'm like, oh, I still have to take my time. Cause that could have been a whole different reason why she or my teammate committed before, you know, August or whatever that was. Sure. That could just be how her process worked. And then my process would be different. So I think like a big thing of that was just making sure, like, I understand everyone's process is different and like, you know, my time will come when it comes. So, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask, because I, Again, a lot of these are just silly questions that I have because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of going through all this for the first time <laughs> learning with y'all. But um, mm -hmm. talk about um, when you're on a team like that, a national high level team, mm -hmm. and, and I'm guessing just about all of you are going to go power five, mm -hmm. right? Um, like, do you guys talk at practice? Like, oh, I talked to so-and-so or, hey, I got an offer from, I mean, What's mm -hmm. that like? Is you are, do you get jealous of other people's offers? <laughs> like, I think like, like with yeah. <laughs> with our team, we are like honestly like a big family, so we're all like really supportive of each other. And then like we do talk a little bit about it. Like obviously, like season was kind of ending during that recruiting process. We had like nationals, like a few practices before that. But like I remember June fifteenth, we're like, oh, you know, like I have a bunch of calls. Like everyone was like, you know, everything was so crazy and like high ends and stuff like that. So. Um, we did like talk a little bit about it, not like a whole bunch, but enough to where like everyone kind of a little bit of understanding. But for the most part, I think like all really supportive, like um, Cassie after she committed, because she was the first one to commit on our team to uh, Kentucky. And we were like, you know, so happy for her. I had a feeling just because um, I don't know, I had a feeling because I think she went to a camp before that. But yeah, I was like just really excited for like one another and stuff like that. So I don't think there's like too much jealousy there, but more like support and stuff yeah. like that but yeah for sure <laughs> that's cool I uh now let me ask you this with wake had you gone um to camp there before no I actually didn't I I think just because like they've been watching me for so long so I knew what I could do and then like obviously I know a big thing now was like either going to camps or setting up visits to show like how serious you are you know that's kind of where how colleges kind of talk about it now so I guess like they did want me to come on a visit so they offered me after or like at my visit yeah. So, yeah, so that's kind of how that worked. I didn't go to their camp, but yeah, when I went to their visit, I was just like, you know, I kind of felt like, okay, I really do like it here, but I did take the other visit, obviously, just to see like what else was sure. out there, I guess. So, yeah, that's how, kind of yeah. how that worked. Well, and talk about, you know, the ACC and, and we talked about playing in a big time conference and, and mm -hmm. I think you're used to playing some big time volleyball. That's going to be a whole nother step. Um, mm -hmm. Excited for that opportunity. No, yeah, hundred percent. It's gonna be way faster, way more like advanced. So, yeah. <laughs> well, let's learn. Let's talk about your game, and we'll show some highlights uh, here on the screen. Um, mm -hmm. The word I always use is explosive, right? And in the front row, um, your vertical, your power off the floor. But talk about what you think you do well on the volleyball court. I think um, I feel like I connect with my team very well. Like, make sure I'm like eye contact, high-fiving one another, just like staying connected. And then also like, I feel like I'm pretty smart on the court, like on the pin, like seeing spaces on the court. It doesn't always have to be. And I think that's where like a lot of the times like it gets confusing. I think that's also what separates me from some outsides because I am like a smaller pin yeah. is like, you don't always have to go up and bang the ball, but like I, I can do it, but like it's always there's other shots out there like there's other ways to score points at the end of the day like a point is a point like you're trying to win you know so I think like I definitely can get up and like hit a ball but like there's other ways to score points too so I think that's a one part thing that kind of sets me apart that, that I think I do well well and, and I think you do that because you're a bit undersized now obviously that explosive and vertical but when you get to the level you're going to mm -hmm. you're against blocks that are six three you're going to have right. to do some different things and your highlights show that you have a variety of shots and you're not um, mm -hmm. to, to use them. What, what do you do as you know where you're going, you know, I mean, one thing you can't change is your height. 
What do you continue mm -hmm. to work on the next two years to put yourself in the best position to play early at Wake Forest? I think like now or like for a while, but like especially now I'm really emphasizing on working off the block and like being more intentional with that. Because like you said, there are going to be like the six, three blocks, bigger girls, high, people that can jump higher, everything, just more like more skill. I'm going to see more skill when I get to that level. So I think just working off the block and like hitting spots I don't usually hit or like adjusting to the team's defense, defense and going like, you know, picking apart from that, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> to talk about real quick, um, I'm just so, as I really follow Texas high school volleyball for the first year, mm -hmm. saying all the talent, um, what, what has your high school year been like so far? It's been so far so good. I'm not too sure on our record right now, but it's, it's good. I think this year we're definitely going to go further. Our team or like the team went to state 2019 and 2020 lost 2020. I came here. I think it was 2021. I, yeah, and then we lost fourth round, which is pretty earlier on from like the past, you know, and then we lost fourth round twice last year too. And like this year, like our whole court is pretty much 2025 girls, mostly play like Houston Skyline and HJV is like the main, you know, yeah. Yeah. people on our court right now. And then um, we have like two underclassmen that, or like three underclassmen that play on the court, but like for the most part, it's all 2025. I think we're going to do really well this year and like Honestly, I'm hoping and I can see us going back to state, just like our connection off the court corresponds like to on the court. So like that's like a big part. And then also like we all have the same goal and want the same thing. So I feel like we're going to do pretty good this year. That's awesome, baby. Well, I appreciate you letting us be along for a little bit of the ride um, and following me. <laughs> and I feel, you know, we've talked a few times, but need to follow you from really February through um, your mm -hmm. decision. Uh, congratulations. I bet it's a relief. Thank you. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, absolutely. And now you just have fun and play volleyball and we look mm -hmm. forward to watching you more, uh, watching more highlights and seeing you down the road. Okay. Of course. Thank you.